in the years that we have been coming to events such as this, uh, lobbying for change, this is the very first time we've had politicians come and show interest in the children. And um, I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you. Youth know to child welfare within Alberta, across Canada and beyond. They continue to lose their lives at an alarming rates. Calls for independent investigation into human services and inquiry into the deaths of First Nations people are also supported by government. A Premier of Alberta, who also served as Minister of Human Services, ignored public and opposition leaders' requests for investigation. Eight years ago, Westland Mather and MLA cited the horrific death of a child named Nina as an example of the danger that exists when the Department of Children's Services fails at its job. This is a quote. Despite numerous calls by child care interveners that had received claims of abuse and even a full investigation into the family, the children were left in an unsupported home and barely attended school. Calls kept coming. Why did the system let this girl fall through the cracks? Mayor asked during question period before calling for a public inquiry. Alberta leader Rod Sherman also wrote to the Prime Minister asking for a public inquiry into the deaths of foster children in the province. In response, the Human Minister, the Human Services Minister, who was Dave Hancock at the time, said Sherman is grasping at straws. The head of the Alberta Parent Foster Association, Catherine Jones, stated, media questioning of foster care should not be allowed. The comment followed a damning investigation that found the number of children who have died in government care was nearly triple official numbers. Today, we know the true toll of human lives is, at least, 14 times the figure publicly disclosed even then. Premier Hancock said he was not certain there was value in a public inquiry into murdered and missing Aboriginal women, even as other provinces pressed the federal government to launch a national probe into the issue. If we the public allow for investigations of misuse of public expenditures, as with Premier Redford, Surely we consider human life at least equally worthy of inquiry. In unanswered letters to government representatives, I wrote, Dear ministers, and, I, and I, that's plural, because this has occurred for years, you claim that it has been hurtful to hear revelations about how poorly the foster care system in Alberta is functioning. Let me tell you what pain is. Watching one's eight-year-old son take it upon himself to write a letter of goodbye to his sister, walk up to a podium to courageously read the tribute aloud amongst hundreds of onlookers also mourning. Return to his seat and collapse into one's arm, sobbing so intensely that the chapel is wrapped with the sound of his distress. And feeling completely inadequate because nothing, not a single, single thing can be done to alleviate the, such utter hurt within a small child. Hurt consists of having every worry confirmed tenfold as one finally gains access to truth through documentation, demonstrating that others too have invited have been voicing concern and to no avail. Find out that caseworkers who had made reassurances had in reality not laid eyes on a child for 14 months. Pain stems from being failed by a system in which the entire purpose for a child to be under ministry direction is to receive extraordinary medical supports. It exudes with the revelation the caseworker had not followed through a duty to ensure the child was presented for intervention as directed, instead relying upon word of mouth of the caregiver who failed to take the child to a physician for periods lasting up to three years. Mr. Premier, your hurt pales in comparison. 
that you would possibly use that particular terminology in carrying one's hurt and attention finally being duly given to children who died under provincial direction can only be viewed as an effort to detract from accountability at the exposure of truth. Frankly, on behalf of all who survived the death of those young lives, it leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. The loss that I describe is but one family's tragedy. Imagine how many lives are destroyed stemming from those 775 children lost. I feel you ought to be deeply ashamed of a ministry that refuses to acknowledge that a problem exists or apologize for those losses of vulnerable lives. Instead of saving face, please strive to save our most vulnerable. We, the people, demand a full public independent investigation of leadership. Secrecy must end. Our future depends on our youth. We, the public, have collected thousands of signatures demanding an independent investigation of the child welfare system. Alberta Justice and those representatives who served during the past 15 years, while well, 775 babies, children, and youth lost their lives. Social work is supposed to be built on the premise of preserving and bolstering families in times of crisis. I have youth excellent workers who offer support and understanding. Conversely, I have had the misfortune of meeting inhumane persons whose prejudice is glaring. Those who assume families must have created their own dire situation. These are workers who have forgotten their purpose. Preying upon families in times of weakness, berating, speaking down to you, criticizing, failing to listen to our errors, which transpire far too often in the social humanities. The field has become an industry, and instead of a helping, helping mechanism based upon family-centered care principles, each case is unique, every individual deserving of dignity, honor, of ability, culture, and belief. There are no consequences for negligence. Each employee is shielded by title. Thus, in the absence of a deterrent, little incentive to change. In a report to the Attorney General, the public in inquiry into the death of my own daughter, Samantha Martin, con is contradictory and missing statements exist. My child is but one of hundreds of fatalities in the province. How many other deaths are inaccurately or falsely portrayed? Alberta's chief medical examiner allegated political and bureaucratic interference in the independence of her office. Dr. Annie Savon has raised concerns, specifically in relation to deaths of children in provincial care. Quote, Currently, there is regular political and bureaucratic interference in all aspects of the death investigation system, from the determination of cause and manner of death to the development and implementation of policy related to death investigation. She states in a July 31st, 2014 internal letter to then Alberta Justice Minister, Minister Jonathan Dennis. She says, in the current conditions, I cannot protect the integrity of the death investigation system. Well, we were ruled under the same government for 44 years, which deemed investigation unwarranted. These same individuals punished the whistleblower. However, this government was subsequently voted out. The Solicitor General, Justice Minister, was ordered to step down. His own spouse allegated that he claimed to own the police and judiciary. Throughout the years, I've watched key leaders from Hancock to Forsyth, Fritz, Tarcha, Evans, and I listened as each proclaimed the same tired promises, word for word, regarding the welfare of children being at the forefront of decisions. You each need be deeply ashamed. Not one of you had the decency to respond to letters or phone calls of concerns suggesting change. At times, some of the recommendations were implemented into policy without attributing lessons gleaned from hardship. 
Those who fail to represent children of families eaten by the system, lives dismissed, act as if we were expected to simply forget that our loved ones existed. Our loved ones did exist, and leaders were in positions to offer justice, but chose to defend the system rather than the children. We must investigate and hold persons responsible equally under penalty of law, the same as other citizens. Today, I say 